And welcome to another episode of Inside Rangers Football. I'm your host, Brian Freeman, again joined via Zoom by Smithson Valley head coach Larry Hill. The Rangers are out to a 2-0 start this season, most recently a 31-6 win over Madison this past Friday at Commonlander Stadium in San Antonio. Coach, a game in which you never trailed this past Friday. Defense played really well. You ran the football effectively. A lot of positives from the game against the Mavericks. What were your biggest takeaways? Uh, just what you said, you know, I, I, I thought uh, the fact that we did get out in front, even though they, you know, matched the first touchdown with one of their own, we blocked the extra point and held on to the lead and, and just kind of had them playing catch up, you know, and I thought uh, uh, stopping their run after drive one, they ran the ball very effectively on us the first drive, but I thought the rest of the evening we, we stopped their run very well and kind of made them one dimensional. And then meanwhile, uh, we're able to run the ball well on our end. So anytime you can run the ball and stop the run, you got a chance to win. And I thought that was a big key. Also thought too, coach, the defensive play for you on third downs, because you look at the six points given up again, none after the first quarter, you didn't force any turnovers. It's hard to limit a team to six points without forcing takeaways, but, but you did force nine punts, the ability to get off the field. Just how uh, happy were you, happy were you with that? We were happy. You know, third down is where games are won and lost. Your ability to stop the opponent on third down. And then, of course, offensively, your ability to convert on third down. And we we're above 50% on that this year on the offensive side. And our defense has got them below 30%. So that is a big key. We'd like to get more takeaways. We got four week one. I believe we got six takeaways in our scrimmage. Uh, I had some near takeaways the other night, but uh, didn't get the ball loose. But like you said, we did force nine punts. And that's the name of the game. On the on the topic of turnovers, that's now two straight games for you to open the season without giving up any of your own on offense. Again, you have new parts offensively this year, as is the case every season with high school football. A new quarterback, albeit with a player who's been in the program for a number of years in Jalen Nutt. The fact that you have not coughed to the football at all through eight quarters of play, awfully impressive. Well, you know, don't jinx us by saying that too early, but we've still got a lot of football left to play. But yeah, you know, it, it certainly is a plus. You know, you hope to move the ball and score every time you have it, but at the very least, take care of the football. Let's punt it down to them. Our defense is playing well, and uh, let's see if we can get the ball back that way and, and hopefully better field position. So uh, taking care of the ball is big for us, for everybody, but uh, so far we've done good at it. Again, 31 points for you offensively. Over 430 yards of offense, the bulk of which came on the ground, more than 320 yards rushing for you. Uh, so your backs, your quarterback, Jalen Nutt, ran effectively, but your offensive line to win the line of scrimmage against a very talented front from Madison had to be a very big positive for you as you move forward uh, in the district play. Yeah, I thought those guys played extremely well and have all year. Uh, you know, the uh, O-line, as we all know, is always underappreciated, underpublicized. But, uh, you know, those guys work well together as a unit. We, we move a lot of them around. Some of them play different positions throughout the course of the night, look at different combinations. But, uh, you know, uh, they are able to wear on people. Uh, that's two weeks in a row. Our running game has really come on in the second half and allowed us to uh, – uh, meanwhile, while we're stopping the run, our running game is increasing. And, you know, you begin to wear people out a little bit. That's the hope anyway. Two weeks we've been able to do that. And, and it's really a, a by, byproduct of the play of our offensive line. If you talk to high school coaches, college coaches, professional coaches, they all say the same thing. You want to see the biggest improvement from a football team from week one to week two. Did you see that jump from your football team this past Friday? Well, I thought we did improve quite a bit in areas that, you know, maybe don't show themselves on the stat page or maybe not discernible uh, to the naked eye. But, uh, you know, our first steps defensively, our linebacker fits were better maybe than, uh, than week one. Our cornerback play against a deep ball was better. Uh, you know, uh, our double team, our angles with our offensive lines uh, were better. Some of the decision-making things that we had to do were crisper. You know, again, we didn't get the takeaways. We had a couple of penalties that we didn't have week one that were drive killers on offense. So, uh, obviously, we didn't do everything just right. But uh, uh, all in all, yeah, good, good improvement from week one to two. And that's what it takes because, you know, we know what trains are coming down the track. We, we've got to be playing our best. Again, Smithson Valley out to a 2 no start this season, coming off the win over Madison. As we've talked about, a lot of big plays, both in offense and defense, and of course, special teams, as Coach Hill once again takes us to this week's Plays of the Week. 
Our first play of the week is a defensive play. We're going to focus on the play of our senior defensive end, Trey Moore. You see at the bottom of the screen who's circled. Madison's going to attempt to run a wide quarterback sweep to the left. As the play unfolds, you see Trey, they're trying to block him there with the offensive tackle and the quarterback's trying to get around the end. As it continues, you can see he plays off the block, uh, cuts the quarterback off at the pass, not only tackles him, but kind of slings him backward for seven or eight yards for a big play. Now you watch it from the rear here. There's Trey from the backside. You can see kind of the play as a, as a defender would. Goes to the outside, you see him shuck the block, okay? Continue to uh, continue to play it on, grabs him, slings him, and that was a big third down that we stopped him on, put him in a fourth and long, and they ended up having to punt. So it was a big play there by Trey. Our next big play is an offensive play. We're gonna focus on Maverick Freeland at the top of the screen on the wide angle. Got a circle around him. He's gonna have a one-on-one -on -one opportunity on a deep ball against a cornerback. See as the play goes, he's just going to try to get up on him, wiggle to the outside and go deep. He does. Jalen Nutt, our senior quarterback, has got a great pocket there to launch from, and he throws. You see, we don't beat the kid by much. You can see he's tightly covered. But he goes up, elevates, that ball comes out, and it's what you call a 50-50 ball. we got a 50% chance of catching it. And in this particular case, Maverick makes the catch for a big play up the sideline. See it from Jalen's point of view. Uh, we roll left. You can see he's got a great pocket. He's got a uh, pocket left, pocket right, big alley to throw in. So he's got great room. There's Maverick. Got maybe a half a step on the defender. The ball's thrown to the outside. He's pretty tightly covered, but as it comes dropping out of there, you can see Maverick elevate, catch that thing, lands on his back. Just a big play to set us up down there in the red zone. Uh, nice play by both of those guys. Our final big play is is a kickoff, uh, kicking game play. We're gonna focus on a senior, Darlington Thrash, who of course, his day job is playing middle linebacker for our defense, but uh, if you watch him here, just an outstanding job on kickoff cover. Uh, Austin Hosier, our kicker, kicks the ball deep down the field. Darlington just beats his man, wiggles, runs past the blocker there, okay. diagnoses the ball, and, and another guy's trying to move, in, and then Darlington does a great job as he moves into blocking what we call crossing the defender. He crosses to the other side, avoids the block, makes the tackle, we get him inside the 20, which is always our goal whenever we kick off. You watch it from the rear, from the returner's point of view. You see Darlington, he's kind of uh, moving down the hash mark to there and uh, wiggles out of one block, runs away from that, and then crosses the defender right there, as we noted on the earlier uh, clip, and then grabs him and slings him down inside the 20. Gives our defense great field position, makes Madison go with a long field, and it allows us to get stops and continue to move the ball. Those are our plays of the week. And you know, Coach, we highlighted your ability to run the football so effectively against Madison, and against Harker Heights as well in the opener, but it's not as if your passing game is not existent. Jalen Nutt has played very well at quarterback, has been very accurate with the football so far. And it appears that Maverick Freeland has become a top target of his, making a big play against the Mavericks this past week. Well, you know, Maverick's uh, got a tall target. He's got surprising speed for a guy with the height that he has. Uh, he's battled some injuries and things. And uh, it's good to see him make some plays because he's certainly capable of doing that. And you mentioned the running game. That makes the passing game better. You know, uh, oftentimes those guys are in one-on-one -on -one situations with safeties having to commit to the run. And, uh, uh, they've been very patient. There have been times when people have played high safeties, doubled receivers, and we've been content to run the football until they are chased out of that. And when the opportunities have presented themselves, as you mentioned, we've done well there, including that catch that you saw Maverick make. Well, again, non-district play is now over. Up next, the start of district play coming up this Friday as Smithson Valley takes on the Wagger Thunderbirds. We'll preview that game along with a look at this week's Rangers trivia coming up after this on Inside Rangers Football. Hi, I'm Donna. I'm so excited to welcome Dermatology San Antonio to Smithson Valley. I think we made a great decision. You know, you have a beautiful office, but I brought a few things that I think you're really gonna like. Donna? Principal Wall, 
Are you here to welcome Dermatology San Antonio to Smithson Valley as well? No, I'm here for my three o'clock Diamond Glow Facial. Principal Wall. This week in Rangers Trivia, this Friday against Wagner, Smithson Valley is playing for a 3-0 start of the season. In the Coach Larry Hill era, which dates back to 1994, how many times have the Rangers started this season 3-0? Is the answer A, 10, B, 16, or C, 20? The answer is B, 16 times. The first time the Rangers did it was in Coach Hill's second season in 1995. The last time the Rangers did it was three years ago in 2017. And again, that's right, 16 3-0 starts in the Coach Hill era. At Smithson Valley, the first one, yes, again, happened 25 years ago in 1995, the last of which happened three years ago in 2017. Coach, between your non-district competition over the years and district play as well, because sometimes district starts very early in the season, as is the case this year, getting to 3-0 and is not an easy feat. No, it's not. Uh, you mentioned the, the quality of our non-district schedule has only gotten tougher and tougher through the years as we've won more. You know, you oftentimes can only find non-district uh, games against people who, who, who have the same problem. So we're typically playing some very high quality teams in our non-district play. So to go 3-0 and or uh, this year in the case, 2-0 uh, and is, is tough. And then, of course, like you said, now here we are starting district against a two-time uh, two, two straight year semifinalist team, uh, pretty hard to do. So, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're excited to have the opportunity to move to 3-0 this, this week. We'll see how it goes. Yeah, looking at Wagner, here's something that's very unique. I'm sure this is a first in Ranger football history. You're playing a team opening up its season for a third consecutive week. Harker Heights in week one, Madison last week, and Wagner this week. The Thunderbirds have yet to play a game this season. But you mentioned the resume for them, 13 wins in each of the past two years, and also reaching the state semifinals each of the past two years as a 5A football team in 2018 and 2019. Although you haven't seen this year's edition of Wagner, given what they've accomplished over the past couple of years, all the players that they have back, just how big of a test is this to open district play? Well, it's a huge one. You know, I think there's a lot of us that uh, have high aspirations and, uh, uh, you know, with, with, with our season, you know, uh, we, we all have big goals and, and uh, Wagner's one of those, you know, in 27, six, a, everybody's capable of making a long run and they're one of them. And uh, you know, the, the success they've had, the deep runs they've had the last two years, coupled with the players returning, as you mentioned, uh, uh, well coached team, an off schedule team, both offensively and defensively do some things that are very problematic for you because not only are they good at them, uh, you haven't seen those things much. So uh, how do you defend that style of offense or block that style of defense when you haven't done that really all year long? So they present a unique challenge in addition to just the talent of the football team. A common denominator for Wagner over the past two years with all that success has been the running ability of LJ Butler has been one of the best backs in the San Antonio area, no matter what classification, 4A, 5A, 6A. He's rushed for over 2,000 yards each of the past two years. Now, there was the possibility of Butler transferring to Judson. That didn't happen. He is back at Wagner and assumed to be a threat for the Thunderbirds again. Looking at film on him, just how tough can he be of a back to stop and slow down? Well, he's a problem. Uh, you know, he's a problem for everybody that plays him. And, uh, you know, they do a great job up front offensively. As I mentioned, they run that Navy, Army, Air Force style of option football that, that, that you don't see. And they're very well coached and well, well drilled in it. Mm -hmm. And then he's the feature guy, you know, whether they're handing it to him, pitching it to him, putting it in his stomach, reading whether, whether to give it to him or not. You know, they're really good at what they do. Uh, and they have a lot of talent to do it with, including this kid. I mean, when they were in our league before in 2017, he gave us fits as a, at that time, a freshman running mm -hmm. back. And so uh, he's done nothing but get better. They've done nothing but get better at that style of offense as the results the last two years of, uh, bear out. You kind of get, you kind of get blown away by the way, looking at the, the point totals for Wagner over the past couple of years, you see 50 plus, 60 plus. I think I saw a game that scored 74. So that kind of overshadows the play of the defense. You look at Wagner's defensive numbers from a year ago, they had more than 40 sacks in 15 games, forced more than 30 turnovers. So 
You're averaging about three sacks, two turnovers forced per game defensively uh, from a season ago. Some of those pieces again back here in 2020. What problems does Wagner present to you when they, when they line up on defense? Well, much, much like their offense, you know, uh, the, the, the first thing sticks out at you is just the, you know, the, the talent level on the field, the speed, the size, the athleticism, the, the, the ability to make plays. So mm -hmm. that alone sticks out. And then they're very diverse and uh, very off schedule with what they do. It's not what you blocked a week ago or it's not the normal, a lot like their offense, a little bit out of the mainstream. So getting ready for it in a short period of time and you couple that with their talent. Uh, it's a tall order for our offense. So, again, we mentioned that Wagner has climbed back up from the 5A ranks to 6A, now in the 27-6A district. Of course, a lot of familiarity. You've been in the district with Wagner before. With realignment, Wagner was added along with South Sand, Canyon, and San Marcos went their separate ways. The rest of the district, though, beyond that is awfully similar to what you've been grouped with over the past four years or so. So as you enter district play, uh, this week. What are your thoughts on the district as a whole? Well, you know, uh, probably what everyone else's thoughts are that, that has the misfortune of being in this league. You, you just know it's going to be a battle each week, a war each week. And uh, uh, the only comforting thought is it's, it's, it's a level playing field. Everybody's got the same problems. Uh, everybody's got a tough one this week. And when they get through with it, they've got a tough one next week. And it, it's an over, it's an oversimplification, but really all you can do is just keep your eye on the ball and play this game this week, and we'll worry about the train that's coming down the track next week when when this one's over. And so, our total focus is on Wagner, but we know there's going to be two or three other really fine football games going on around the league, and some good teams are going to win, some good teams are going to lose. And finally, Coach, what do you see being the biggest keys to Friday's game against Wagner? Well, we're going to have to get our stops. We can't allow them to uh, monopolize the football, just hang on to it all night, which that style of offense mm -hmm. is capable of doing, which is exactly why they and others like them run that. Uh, but uh, unlike others who may run that, they also have uh, quick, quick strike capabilities as well. Butler can go the distance. The quarterback can go the distance. And though they don't throw the ball just a great deal, they often get people wide open behind everybody because you're so committed to playing the run. So we've got to get our stops and limit their explosives, try to get some takeaways, which we're unable to do last week. Mm -hmm. And then there's no question our offense has got to move the football and uh, keep it ourselves and keep their offense off the field. Well, Coach, best of luck Friday against Wagner. Okay, Brant, thank you so much. All right, that again, a look ahead to this Friday's game, 27-60 action between Smithson Valley and Wagner. We'll have live coverage of the game available for you as well right here on the Rangers Network. Kickoff from Rutledge Stadium in Converse is at 7.30. So for Coach Hill, I'm Brian Freeman. Thanks as always as you've been watching Inside Rangers Football.